Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part three of the Virtual Reality Hover Bike Simulator game. In the first two parts, I build the hardware out of wood and steel, and I'm working with final year degree students in computer games design and animation to actually build the computer game for this. So we've got a Virtual Reality Vive Tracker on it that gets it into the virtual environment, and also it's got pedals and buttons, and those are brought into the Vive Tracker as well. So we've got all of those controls can be brought into the computer game, but let's see how the team are doing. All right, we're down at Portsmouth University in the Virtual Reality Lab with the team and the hover bike. So we've got our controls that we built in parts one and two, and we've got the Vive Tracker so that gets tracked into virtual reality. And we've also got two foot pedals. Obviously we have the virtual reality headset and handsets, and that's all tracked with the Vive lighthouses which are up on tripods. Right, so the team have done quite a bit of work on the game so far. We've got pretty much an almost playable game. There's a few things to sort out with the steering and so on. We've got these fans that run when you go forward at a certain speed, and I think they turn on left and right when you steer left and right, so the wind's blowing at you. And you might be able to hear the rumble motor going in here, which is for the motor. So at the moment when you're steering, we're doing it so you've got lean to steer? Yeah, we originally had it paired up to the pedals, like okay. a helicopter sort of control, yeah. but it was so unnatural, we now go to steer in the direction okay. of lean. So we were originally going to have the pedals so they you push one way and it steers the other way, like it's two yeah. boosters. We spent a lot of time trying to map the handlebars and the seat into VR, just to make sure kind of it's in line with the seat you're sitting on, and so when you grab the handlebars it feels like you're actually holding them instead of like just holding nothing. So we found that like people were playing it and they found like with the pedals and stuff it didn't feel right as like okay. a, a feeling like you're riding a bike. Yeah. So it felt like if you lent more it meant it kind of felt more natural. So it's leaning and pedals basically? Yeah. Now that seems better. Right. Okay. So if I lean up and down does that fly? Um, not yet. Oh, I'm upside down. So with the track to fix the problems we've had with too tight corners and the walls, we're now sculpting it as a terrain, so I think it should be a lot softer, a lot more natural, and the corner's gonna be a bit wider, so the turning circle should be easier to complete. Yeah. So what's that is that another planet I can see? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just on the skybox. Okay. Right. You're on a moon. There's oh, I see oh this seems better. There we go. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, here we go, right, got it. And do these pedals still then, oh they do turn me a little bit. Yeah, if you lean it should just stay. Like... See? So... I just reduced the speed. Oh okay, well, that seems manageable though. Oh this isn't too bad. Yeah. 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 So this is a dropship that we've just completed actually. Um, this will be dropping the player into the game at the beginning. So that one flies, goes under there, and now I can drop out. We have an array of rock textures that have already been completed. So including ones that glow in the caves and moss ones. We have crystals that will also be in the caves and will be glowing as well. With the crystals and things we're going along with the Star Wars theme so it links in with the kyber crystals and things like that to sort of give it a link to it but not get sued. 
<laughs> yeah, one idea we had, of course, was to try and have more of an analog so you can actually control the speed. The one idea I had was to have the headset so as you put your head down, you lean forward, it goes faster and when you put it back. But I don't know if that's, if you're doing a shooting game, mm, yeah, it's going to be a bit weird. So what we could do with, I guess, is some sort of analog control, which means putting something else in so that we can read the analog control. Yeah. Right, so we gave in and we've now got an e-bike twist grip and an Arduino Leonardo with some firmware on with the joystick library that turns it into a human interface device in Windows and now it's just one axis. So we should be able to see the y-axis moving there as we twist the twist grip and that should be hopefully easy to read into Unity. So we fitted that on the bike there and we'll let the team have a go with programming that up and seeing how the playability is. Right, so I'm here with Rebecca, who is a final year degree student in computer game technology and is specialising in uh, some of the artwork for this project. So we've got um, a hover bike on the screen here, it looks like. Yep. So can we just see, uh, you had a wireframe there a minute ago. Yeah, so that's showing the topology of the model. And we had some other options as well, I believe, that we, when we looked at the concept art. So these are all the options that we're going okay. to be going through. All right, so we're going to have just one main bike that's No, nope, we have six. Okay, and so there's one for the main character, and can you select the one you're going to ride? Yeah. And then so there's other characters yeah. yeah, on the other yeah. bikes. And then you can choose the colour scheme for the bike as well. Yeah. And we just have a look at those riders again? Right, so I got to choose these. So we're going for that uh, orange man in the middle by the looks of it. Yeah, with some pipes with, But with the extra pipes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So men in white armour, not stormtroopers. So these are not the Ewoks. There's some other characters. So those are going to be rigged and they're going to be properly animated and yes. um, walking around, throwing arrows and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, and you can choose to shoot them if you want to at the beginning, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, but past a midway point, you will have to shoot these guys. So yeah, that's why we made them cute. <laughs> All right, looks good. OK, and these are the handhelds, so they'll be representing a Vive controller when you're shooting. Yeah. Basically like a handheld pistol. All right, this is Ashley, and he's also final year degree in computer game tech, and is also doing some of the artwork, so the actual track and scenery and things like that. Yeah, all the environment assets and design. Okay, so this is again modelled in, so 3D Max or? 3DS Max for the 3D art, although we're using TreeIt to make all the photos okay. for the game. So it's like a, a tree generator? Yeah, so it allows a bit more, you can add wind effects, we can automatically add leaves and stuff, okay. without having to manually do it all. All right, sounds good. So, what, this is the track layout. Yeah, so we started with a 2D sketch based around existing racetracks and then built a 3D mock-up of the design and that's where we started off for the gameplay. Right, so we've got some multi-levels there. Yeah, so, so be, you can fly up and down. Yeah, a bit and of height variety. Will you be able to fly over the yeah, track or do you have to stay on the track? Um, there's some bits where we've specifically added sort of sections where you'll be able to jump down. Okay. So for certain sections, yes, for others it'll be contained. So this is how they look um, when they're first produced without all the leaf textures. And then once the textures are added, they end up looking like the trees at the bottom here. Wow, okay, and you mentioned wind effects. So these all, will they sway in the wind yeah, and the look leaves, like they're... The leaves will blow. Like they're in Avatar. It, yeah, it should look... <laughs> like they're look, alive. It should look brilliant. Okay, so these are the buildings and things that not the Ewoks live in, not the Ewok village. Yeah, the not Endor treetop village. Yeah. So, uh, uh, some buildings. And are these all uh, modelled from scratch? Uh, yeah, these were all drawn in Inkscape, um, based around existing sort of treetop villages, more primitive villages, and sort of just taking real world inspiration. Um, these were done in Photoshop, the silhouettes, um, and sort of some detailing pieces that can go around the village. And we'll have real fire that works. Hopefully. Yeah. All right, this is Matthew, whose degree is in animation. So as you'd expect, he's responsible for animating characters, the not the Ewoks, and uh, various other things in the game. So uh, we've got basically a hover bike there. So yeah, once uh, B gives me the bike finished, I'll have it in pieces like this, which I will then sort of piece together and group and add little bones, which I can then move and then add a small animation that will give it a hover things like that to attack, make it stop, that kind of stuff. Um, obviously with the characters as well, they're a little bit more complicated, so they will have a inside bone sort of structure which I can then move and then stick the skin of the character onto it. This is obviously a placeholder character while I'm uh, waiting for the characters to be made. Okay, so this will be the not the Ewok. This is a so practice. now he's a little gnome with an axe. <laughs> so, uh, right, okay. Uh, he can see him doing an attack animation, which are all relatively simple, uh, as well as uh, 
death animation, which obviously will hopefully be quite satisfying oh, right. when you, uh, when you shoot get them. shot. So you can see the different bones uh, will move the character as it's needed. So that's basically yeah. the 3D model turns up as a blob, I suppose, and then you have to put the joints in. Yeah, so first it won't move at all. I put the joints in, which will, can then rotate each part, and after a while I sit there, start rotating each bit, and hopefully end up with an animation. All right, this is Adam, who's also doing a degree in computer game technology, but specialising in the code um, in Unity 3D and C Sharp, which is basically the glue that sticks everything together to make the game, I guess. So um, we've got Unity 3D there, yeah, with a little preview of the game. Yeah, so this is um, just to show kind of... So this is pretty much rendered graphics already, so this has come on quite well. Yeah, so like on the so camera... So that's our bike, basically. Yeah. So this is like imported in from, you know, like a, a 3ds Max or Maya, and... Um, for example, you can see on here it's got some like bloom effects on the camera. Uh, yeah. So you can like look at the trees are a bit more wow, lower okay. and stuff. And they're going to be more animated, the trees, when, uh, uh, yeah, when we so get there. So the... There's a script that basically binds it from going above this certain level. So you can see it's kind of like bobbing up and down. But you can, for example, like just shoot it straight up and it should just fall down gradually. Okay, so we're going to be reading all the Vive controllers, the twist grip and the pedals and the uh, inclination, the lean, and the pan and tilt of the bike, I should say, into Unity using C-sharp. Yeah, so this so is... So there's a ton of code. This is kind of like the main script that kind of holds everything, so you can, this is like calling all the, all the VR stuff, and these two scripts kind of um, determine whether the person's leaning on the bike and what way it should turn, and... So all of those steering, leaning to steer, and taking into account the pedals... Yeah. ...to make those virtual thrusters, so that's using basically Unity physics, I guess, to... Yeah see how that thing moves with a mass in the yeah. environment. Well. And so the physics seem to work not too bad. I guess it will be better when we've got the twist grip on. Mm. Some of the early testing, we ended up flying upside down by accident yeah. and not being to turn back up. So yeah. so seems like it's coming together. Yeah, so at the moment, I think the next stage will be kind of um, making sure the turn circle changes depending on the speed you're going at, just so it feels more realistic and you can kind of go around corners a bit better. All right, so I'm going to leave the team with the new twist grip and we'll come back another time and see how the game's progressing and how easy it is to fly the bike and hopefully I'll get to have a go on it.